Hey, Laura. Hi, Tanya. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Um, we where where to start? We uh, we're taking a look through these documents that were released through parliamentary privilege and made their way online uh, a couple of days ago. And there's a payment list. I mean, these are incredible documents. Uh, just There's just so much, so much data, but there's a particular list that I'm grateful to you for looking at with me. How do we make this kind of bigger for people to see? Um, let me have a look. So if I share that tab instead. There's like a Zoom function. I don't know if that's going to make it visible to everyone other than me. No. As in everyone. Because this was, hang on, you just need to, oops, what have I done? Oh, no. That's okay. We can edit this too, by the way. <laughs> I don't know how to edit. Um, I don't know how to edit video. All right. Um, you do or you don't? No. So, it's the same as audio. <laughs> um, really? What um, software do you use? You could use iMovie. You could oh, use yeah. Windows Movie Editor. Just got this dark bit on it now. How do I? Uh, oh. Hang on. So if I press, what is that doing over here? Um, sorry. As in the bit down the bottom. The entire screen, I'm going to do an escape. The entire screen is like dark, like I've select all or something. Oh. That's not what it looks like to me. I'm refreshing my. And here we are. Live. So now I've. <laughs> I've got you. What do you mean live? <laughs> oh, no, sorry. And we're live. Um, okay. And it is, sorry, it's already been recorded. It's. I want to split the a tab. That's a bit better. So I'm <laughs> seeing that. So that's a bit clearer. Um, and it's a list of donations to organisations, people for their ministries. And we start with the Australian Christian Channel. It goes over 2018, 2019 and 2020. Um, and the Australian Christian Channel is at the top. They got a payment of 30000 in 2018 and 20000 in 2019, we've had a little look at their board. Can't see anything too exciting there. No, there's um, not a lot of info about them readily available just in terms of my own Googling. <laughs> well, um, uh, all right. And David McCracken, he's another uh, Pentecostal pastor. He got 5,000 and 5,000 in the, in the last two years of that. Um, and then we get to we get a lot more familiar names after mm. this. So I'll keep this thing straight. So right, all right. Um, Paul De Jong. Now Paul De Jong runs a church called Life in New Zealand. Uh, but he has a very long history with the Houstons. So Paul De Jong was actually Frank Houston's PA for a number of years and would have done anything for Frank. And for some reason, he gets no payment in 2018, nothing in 2020, but 10,000 in 2019. Not bad. What did he do? Did he come and speak? Is this like a... Don't maybe, know. Don't want to these ask are, any... These are just sorry. donations. This is crooked, sorry. These are just donations. Um, so it's not like a love offering or anything like that? No, these seem to be straightforward because you would think a love offering would be an uneven number. 
That's keep true. Going out of their pocket. Small change, yeah. Um, and then um, 103.2 media sales. Now, I mean, I don't know why they're donating, but that's a Christian uh, radio station. Is it not for profit? No. Uh, Richard Godwin is Brian's friend, Rick Godwin in Texas. That he's, I mean, when I say friend, he's very proudly posted pictures of that. Hillsong Conference regular. He is. is. He oh, every year. And every Jocelyn year. Wilderstein impersonator. <laughs> um, and now he got an uneven number of nearly 14,000 in 2019. Don't know what that might be an exchange rate thing. So maybe he got, I don't know, 20 or 20,000 Australian or something and it converted to that. Mm. Now, Steve Grace got nothing 2018, 2019 and got 5,000 in 2020. What do we know about he's a musician from? He looks like he's um, going by the hat. He's looking a little bit country. A bit rock and roll. Tim Hall International Ministries every year. 10,000, 10,000, 5,000. What do we know about Tim? He's in uh, South Australia. What do we know about Tim? He's been on the AOG circuit and I think he's big on the Planet Shakers scene Okay. for many years. He was into the Toronto Blessing. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And... Is he the father of David Hall? I actually don't know. Okay. David Hall find out. Be at court. Bruce Hills. I don't know who Bruce Hills is. I think you... Do you want me to tell you who Bruce Hills is? He got a payment of 10000 10000 and then he, he got cut back in 2020. He got cut back to just five, but he, he gets something every year. Bruce or the, Hill. The international he, industries. He's sorry. the son. He's the son of Philip Hills. Oh, no, sorry. Bruce Hills, sorry, is under... So, yeah, sorry. Bru Tim Hall International Ministries, Bruce Hills, my apologies. Yeah, Bruce Hills is Philip Hill's son. Um, they come from Melbourne, Richmond Assembly okay. of God, now called Numa Church. It was called, um, and in fact, Bruce Hills was the pastor of Garden City Christian Centre and was ousted by Brian Houston in 2009 when they took over Garden City. Okay. That Bruce Hills is the guy, I think he went on stress leave or something and came back and there was Hillsong written all over his church or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, look, uh, I imagine that couldn't yeah. have been easy because he got voted out by his own congregation. And Hillsong sent a bunch of little missionaries, little college students to billet with families from Garden City to spread the good news about why you should vote in favour of becoming a Hillsong church. Yeah, that was a that was a big one. Who's Kabala? Ooh, Kabala. I don't know. Kabala. They got five thousand in twenty eighteen, and nothing not since. Kabala, Kubala. That is. Uh, Lead escape with Michael Murphy. Now, Mike Murphy was the uh, senior assistant pastor. Like he was second in command for about eleven years. Wow. With, yeah, with Hills Christian Life Center, there used to be Brian and then Mike Murphy. Um, and then he went to the Sutherland Shire and then uh, Scott Morrison went to his church and the rest is history. But he does business development and he got 10, 10 and 5. Now, after that, Life Church is Paul De Jong again. He got close to 10,000. Who was Soul Church again? Did we decide is that... There looks to be a few soul churches, but see the the end, the column at the very far right, it says GLO, which I assume means global. Yep. I imagine it's not soul church in Hobart. So there's a soul church in the UK. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know exactly which soul church. There looks like there's quite a few. Magnificent, yeah, magnificent worship. Now, I did an ABN search on them and that was linked to an address in what looks to be rural South Australia outside of Adelaide. Hmm. 
don't know who is involved, don't know any names. Now, Pattern Builders Incorporated has got Danny Goog written next to it. Danny Googlamucci has been the South Australian contingent. I get them confused because um, the Evanses were at Paradise and they were Guy Sebastian people. Um, My understanding uh, is that the the Googlamucci brothers were slightly, I think they were slightly older than the Evans brothers, so they were sort of filling in um, until the Evans boys came of age. Is that your understanding? I just don't know. I know that um, Danny has been on the national exec or what, you know, old school, 30 years, these families go back. I just... I think he's like what... Um, what Pat Mercedi was to Brian, I think Danny was to the Evans clan, who I kind yeah, of cool. There's so many of them. Can I say that? <laughs> say whatever you want. Um, it's just kind of running through the list. So Steve Penny, um, in for a penny, in for a pound. Steve has been around for, and I mean, his parents are friends with Houston parents, or you know, way back the Frank and Hazel days. So these families go way back, pre Sydney um, days, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think New Zealand. So, uh, so sorry, Danny Good got 10,000, 10,000 and 5,000. Penny gets 10,000 and then he gets a big 30,000. Well, the ministries, uh, my apologies, Steve Penny, ministries, 30,000 and then nothing. Oh. Yeah, sorry, Steve. <laughs> what did um, you do? Who is Ben Wincop? I know that Tim is a lawyer. Um, ben Wincop. I've just lost my place. Ah, oh, Ben Wincop. Hmm. I mean, he got he got a thousand in the middle. Um, Heart for the House, twenty nineteen World Missions, five thousand in the middle. Is that is that all? Yeah. Hang on. So Heart for the House, that's a uh, its own kind of organization charity. Is that right? Oh, look, you know, it's their annual fundraiser thing right before the end of the tax year, isn't it? At the end of June. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just, and that's the miracle offering that they usually announce just prior to Hillsong Conference. Okay. Such good timing financially with everything. Um, I don't know what what happens there. We've got we've got Youth Alive, 20,000, uh, and then nothing. When's that? Is that, yeah, 2018, they get 20,000. Anthem, don't know what that means. They got Could be anything. In 2019. Emmanuel Anglican Church we found in Glenhaven, is that right? Yeah, there's an, ang yeah. Which is where Brian and Bobby used to live. So in 2018, they got 10,000. Inspire Church is John McMartin. All right, Liverpool, yeah? Liverpool, um, McMartin again, was president of the National Executive after Brian stepped aside. Um so I think it was for about 10 years. Um, tell me. Uh, all right. Vadim Fashenko, I believe he's linked to Hillsong Moscow. Okay. He, uh, yeah, he seems to be the pastor. He'd have a reason for complaint, wouldn't he? He didn't do too well. How much did he get again? He's got um 1428. That's it. One for him. What did you do? <laughs> now George Whippy is a musician, is this correct? George Whippy. I've heard that name. I believe he's a musician from from way back. He got only one donation of ten thousand in twenty twenty. Um ah. I mean, these are exhaustive lists. Chris Hodges got $10,000 in 2019. Nothing before and nothing since. Um, Clementina Samwaves. Got to be related to a Sanger. Got to be. Some Sanger. Uh, I mean, for all Sangers done, you'd hope for a bit more than 1700 well, one thousand healing stories. Um, oh. <laughs> in his uh, 1715. Kane Keating donation. I don't know him, but he got nearly 15,000. Uh, he seems 
to be connected to Hillsong, New York. Okay, that's right. In what capacity, I don't know, but um, he's on staff at Hillsong NYC and part of the growth and influence, it says, on their website. Sounds like a virus. <laughs> and Phil and Lucinda, um, Julie, got 15000 in 2018 just to, I don't know, even out the float or something. All right, so, I mean... The concerns come in when you compare them to other documents. So let's uh, let's just have a look. Let's say this. Um, so just to kind of just kind of put a bit of background onto this. This was a meeting, the minutes of a meeting that were tendered to the Royal Commission in 2014 uh, by Kilsong or the Australian Christian Churches. So these are official documents and it's it's the minutes of a special executive meeting, 22nd of December, 1999, Sydney Airport, in the Qantas Lounge Club. It's in the chair, Chairman's Lounge. Where does it say what? that again? I remember hearing it was in the Chairman's Lounge. I just... And... You know the minutes. The minutes of this meeting, in short, um, are, are controversial because it's where, uh, according to court testimony, Brian Houston had contacted Keith Ainge to call a meeting, you know, quite quickly, and they all met. They didn't know what it was going to be about, and it ended up being about Brian uh, explaining that Frank's uh, sexual abuse had come to light. Frank's mm. abuse of other people. So Frank's abuse of kids so this is what takes place in the minutes and um the very first thing they say is it was agreed that the minutes of this meeting be kept confidential and in a special file and we've learned a bit about the special files um what have we learned well there's some of them floating around uh john mcmartin had one uh regarding you know barbara taylor's letters and frank houston and you know some things are kept in separate files so Look, you know, the essence of these minutes is, is, is very Frank-centred. It's all about looking after Frank and focusing mm. on Frank and his restoration. And, um, and that, you know, inquiries in relation to this matter be directed to J. Lewis is the final thing. It's, um, I mean, sorry, throw in, it's just, a, it's, it's a concealment document, really, that is what it is. The most, you know, the most pressing matter, number one, was keep it confidential and in a special file. Yeah, uh, and... Um, oh, sorry, number five, sorry. Uh, yes? it, it was oh, agreed say, sorry, sorry. Where, where it says it, it was agreed in the interest of the complainant not to notify the movement of his disciplinary action. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, in line with our restoration policy, which is what the focus of the meeting was. Um, so the, the minutes are confidential and the content would not, you know, the movement wouldn't be notified. And, um, yeah. Sorry, what were we going to say? Oh, no, no. Like, I just, um, yeah, no, that that's all. <laughs> um, so it's... It became particularly chilling to me when I saw this document um, because the names are the same names on these minutes as are on the payment list. And then um, recently, this is from the uh, Daily Telegraph, I believe, that you know, there's ten thousand dollar payments going to Paul De Jong and Chris Hodges, which explains why De Jong and Life seem to get separate payments. And they were in charge of the investigation for the 2019 incident at the Pullman Hotel um, involving sexual misconduct with a female parishioner. So, and yeah, it's yeah. So these little amounts of around ten grand. It's a magic number, isn't it? Mm, mm. And it looks like an established pattern. 
Yeah. Now, a question I want to ask, which exact organization are these coming from? Um, if you could just point me in the right direction there. Oh, that looks terrible. I'm sorry. What have I found? Like, is it Hillsong Foundation? Is it another division of something? There's Hills. I mean, this is going to take so long to work out. Hillsong Trust gives to Foundation, gives to Shiloh, comes back from LMI, and you can take away the number. Oh, it's brain-breaking trying to understand the structure of it. It's, um, yeah. So what this means for the trial of concealment of child abuse, this is not, it's just, it's just so sinister. There's something so chilling about it. And that's all. That I wanted to say, really. What have you got? Well, look, I mean, just seeing the minutes of that meeting, that airport meeting again, which I have seen before, that was in 1999, December, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, it's just interesting because I noticed in um, Brian's book, You Can Change the Future, which came out in 2000, he's got a uh, a dedication to his parents, Frank and Hazel, in the very beginning. And then um, he talks in, about in the introduction um, a little anecdotal story about um, how his father came to commit his life into Christian ministry due to the death of a school friend when he was very young. As we learned in Being Frank. Yeah, so there's three paragraphs here at the beginning mm. that, um, yeah, it's just really odd timing. I think it kind of goes to show how it was effectively hidden away from the public, from the public eye and from the congregation um, until people started finding out via other means. But really what it shows is that everything was just business as usual you know you can see that frank is still participating in hillsong album recordings in you know uh, in subsequent years sitting right up the front um yeah they really i mean i obviously wasn't there at the time but yeah so the the in terms of the concealment laws that were changed uh because previously concealing child abuse had been a misdemeanor and the laws were changed in 2018 uh to make it much more serious and the penalty became a maximum of five years incarceration seven if there were a benefit and there's a whole list of benefits right there just a pattern of benefits to everybody who was at those and other meetings that followed as well uh it's it just seems so direct yeah yeah um but I mean, from just conflating these two, there's that word, conflating, <laughs> these two documents with each other, um, yeah, I mean, can we talk a bit more about that? I don't want to, we might need no, to edit this. I mean, go for it. I just, you know, we don't know. There's not enough detail, obviously, you know, there's no photos, didn't happen, but I mean, this is just, yeah, just a bit of a bit of data, and I don't. So I don't understand much about the way that charities and churches and NGOs are supposed to work. Hillsong seem have always seemed to be very good at blurring the lines between all of those things. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, they're one from one charity to another. Are you allowed to just say, "Hey, here's here's some here's a donation from our our charity to yours"? I mean, I don't under I, is that allowed? Is that ethical? What I do you think? There's a whole lot of breaches that have gone on that we don't um, necessarily know about because, yeah. Sorry, I've lost the tab. Seven oh, where's this? Um, I mean, are these these oh. are donations to organisations and ministries? Are they, is it like, you know how when you're watching Christian television, you're watching TBN or Daystar or whatever, mm. 
and they'll have a giveaway. They might have some little piece of merch and they'll say, they won't say you can buy this for however much it is. They'll say for your gift of $50, you can receive this. And I'm not kidding. This is a real thing. It was that the one example was the sword of the Lord letter opener opener. And it had like a little scripture engraving on it, but they always do that. So you can fill out a donation card online or you can print off one and specify it as a gift and then they don't pay any tax on that and I you get a see. gift receipt. Like is it a way of saying, hey, Steve, I don't know if this is true. I'm just speculating right now. So say Steve Grace comes and does a gig at Hillsong and he has fees for doing a public performance do they say, hey, thanks for your gift of coming to do this performance. Here's our gift of 5000 for your troubles. I don't know if that's yeah, what they well, do. Well, I think it's very deep. There are gifts and there are Donation. charitable donations. Um, mm. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, not having the the knowledge to understand the difference. Um, I mean, sorry, I just wanted to, to find this. Um, how do I do that? Oh, what am I doing? So, yeah. Um, but they're, you know, they're being given for specific reasons there, uh, I'm sure. Mm, mm. I'm sure. Uh, how do I then make it share? I mean, that's kind of, it's kind of it. I mean, it's, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> I don't know, like say, uh, where are we? Tim Hall, Did, you know, does he speak at Hillsong events? Are they making donations to his ministry in return uh are we still on oh yeah are they making donations to these ministries in return for something it's so sort of ambiguous as to what 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 it's all for well yeah exactly i mean there's a list of honorariums in the whistleblower documents uh that are quite standardized as well so it just says donations are distributed to the following organisation people for their ministries. Mm, and, I, you know, like for stuff like, so Youth Alive, for example, they got 20000 in 2018. I mean, is that a standard practice, you know, like that, that, that there's some kind of, I mean, I know that Hillsong, as former members of the Australian Christian Churches and AOG, would have had a lot to do with, uh, you know, the official youth ministry of that denomination, which was Youth Alive, for yeah. them to, to handball them 20 grand, is that just how it is? Is that what they do? Um, uh, yeah, who knows? Um, who knows? Because that, and that, um, that company seems to have changed a lot, like into different companies and then there's Teen Challenge and the 180TC thing and, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, Youth Alive. I mean, they've been around for a very long time. And I think before that, they were called Youth Aglow, weren't they? Hi. Like they used to have Women Aglow, which was the official women's ministry of the AOG. And then they, I don't think Women Alive would sound great if they had to change no. it to Women Alive. But <laughs> um, and Youth are pretty alive. But yeah, I mean, got to keep it simple. It reminds me of like Snakes Alive. <laughs> Alan snakes alive. Oh my goodness, it's exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly what it is. All right, well, something to uh, think about. Yeah, very much. Yeah. And um, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Bye. <laughs> See ya.